My wife Monica and I met seven years ago on a cruise ship. When I met Jay, it really didn't take me very long to realize that I just really, really wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. After we dated about a year, um, Jay got accepted to school in Houston, and I decided, you know, I'll just pick up and try it out and move there with him and just see where our relationship would go. And we got two apartments and just to appease our families and it was kind of funny we called it our guest house because we actually lived together and we just started living as a married couple basically after about six months in houston together living uh, in the same town home uh, we found a great church a great bible church to go to and over the course of a year year and a half we got involved in a growth group and uh, we really got to know a lot of people very well we got to know the pastor real well and we started to get involved and really plugged into the church and the community. When we started forming these relationships with our friends and our growth group and the pastor at our church, um, God really started weighing heavy on my heart about Jay and I living together and that it really wasn't the right thing to do and no matter how easy it seemed, you know, financially and emotionally sometimes too, it really just was not the right thing for us to do spiritually. It wasn't the right way for us to start a life together. And it wasn't a good example of a Christian relationship to other people who weren't followers or believers of Christ. It was never really talked about in the open that Monica and I were living together. Um, we were comfortable. We were ashamed to talk about it in the group, but our friends were concerned about it and they would talk to us and love on us and just wanted to know more about it and they would try to help us and then one day I got an email from the pastor he wanted to have dinner with Monica and I and I didn't know what to think I thought it was just gonna be dinner and he just wanted to talk to us and uh, you know maybe about marriage we've been together for a long time and I just really had no idea what to expect when Jay came home one day he told me that our pastor had emailed him and he said that he wanted to have dinner with us and just talk with us and I immediately knew exactly what he wanted to talk about and I was relieved and scared all at the same time. He came out and said, look guys, I love you and the people in our church love you and your friends love you in growth group, um, but there's, there's one thing that, that I'd like to talk to you about and that's the fact that you guys are, are still living together and um, you know, this, this is just, I, I see you guys loving Christ and growing in Christ and that's great. He goes, but there's this unrepentant sin uh, that I'm really concerned about and, and I would like to talk to you about it. And he just laid it all out on the table for us and just asked us what we were planning on doing and really wanted Jay to just make a decision to move out and show me that he was a spiritual leader and that he was going to be the guy that led our family to Christ. I threw, uh, I threw him every excuse in the book of why I didn't want to move out and, and you know all the problems that could arise. My main concern was the financial aspect, uh, you know, getting another apartment to rent and groceries to be split and, and you know he, he told me outright, Jay, you don't have to worry about that. The church is going to help you. God's going to provide for you. Uh, you don't have to worry about renting an apartment. We'll, we'll do that. We'll put money together and we can take care of that for you. So he had shot down all of my excuses um, with great answers and uh, great replies and with love. And uh, there I was. I had, I had no options and no excuses left. We went home that night and I was scared to death. I was nervous that Jay would leave me. I was nervous that our relationship would go south. I, I mean, there was just so many emotions going through me that I was scared. I was really scared. You know, that story with Jay and Monica was absolutely remarkable. And I'm going to tell you something. There are three heroes in that story. There's Jay, there's Monica, and there is a courageous pastor who loved them enough to speak the truth. Now, I'm going to take a few minutes and come alongside you as your marriage coach. And over the last three decades, I've done about 25,000 hours of marriage counseling. I've sat with couples in all stages of repair and disrepair in their marriages. I've helped people get equipped for marriage on the front end, help people going through the guardrails when they've experienced pain, and help people in subsequent marriages reestablish uh, a redemptive understanding of what biblical marriage is all about. 
But I want to talk to you about something that I believe is so significant, it is so important, and many times the church is a little bit quiet on this issue, and it's the issue of cohabitation. Now, you may know somebody that's living together, and perhaps you are, and I want to say everything. Scripture says, speak the truth in love. And I want you to know something, friend, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But the story that you just saw is a real story. These are not actors. I mean, this couple courageously received love and correction and some spiritual discipline from their pastor within the body of Christ, a community of believers that loved them enough to move close to them. And even though you heard Jay's story, he pushed back. He was defensive. He didn't want to hear this. And perhaps if you're listening to me and watching me right now, you may not want to hear this. But I want you to know I'm going to speak this truth in love. We are living in a culture where almost half of people are cohabiting before they marry. And especially with the 20-somethings, there are many that are watching biblical marriage and they're watching my generation, the baby boomer generation, that have not done marriage well. And so they're coming to a conclusion that, you know what, I don't think marriage is all it's cracked up to be. And so a lie has been bought. And that lie, I guarantee you, is not from God. It's from the enemy of God. And that is that we will do a counterfeit way of lifestyle and we'll move in prior to marriage believing that if we test the waters, we will have a more successful marriage. Now, I need to tell you, the research does not reflect that. In fact, let me tell you some bullets here of what the research does reflect. Living together before marriage increases the risk of breaking up after marriage. Here's another one. Living together outside of marriage increases the risk of domestic violence for women and the risk of physical abuse and sexual abuse for children. Now, that's a pretty tender issue, and I know nobody wants to step in to that consideration of putting a woman or a family at risk. But there's more. Cohabiting couples report lower levels of happiness, lower levels of sexual connection and satisfaction, poorer relationships with their parents, and cohabitors may face more serious difficulties and increased rate of depression within marriage. So with all of that, why is it that so many people are saying, you know what, I've got a better idea than what God has and we're going to cohabit rather than step into moral purity with a biblical marriage. And again, I'm moving closer to you, and I know that I'm running the risk of, a, of really spending some equity bullets here, but I care more about you and more about what God wants in your life than I do how you want to respond to me right now. You know what, folks? Cohabiting in many ways, I believe, will cause maladjustment later on in marriage. So let's step back for a minute. If you had sat in my counseling office and had come in, much like Jay and Monica talked to their pastor, I want to tell you what I would have said to you. If you're getting married in a month, if you're getting married in six months, if you're getting married tomorrow, I want to encourage you with something. I would like to have you step aside from that cohabiting relationship. And the first thing I'd like to have you do is to seek forgiveness from one another. And why is that so important? God does not want us to step into sexual impurity prior to marriage. Now, some of you are saying, Gary, I've been married before. I've had sex with my fiance for months. We've been cohabiting for months. Well, you know what? Jay and Monica lived together for four years. But that courageous pastor lovingly said, you know what? I'm not only going to challenge you on this issue. I'm going to make a way for you financially so that you can step outside of that living together situation, reclaim the sanctity of the marriage bed, seek the forgiveness from one another. Friends, this is not about boxing you in. This is about receiving God's boundaries to help you guard the heart of your marriage. Barb and I, and far more importantly than Barb and I, the Lord wants you to have a terrific marriage. It's his idea that we take the high road. It's his idea that we bring moral purity. And when we have fallen in, and you know what? Many people have, and that is fine but that we, through a broken and contrite spirit, ask God to forgive us, ask the person that we're engaged to to forgive us, reclaim the moral high ground, step into separate living conditions, and then allow God to bless that marriage. Now, I want to tell you what Paul says in the book of Ephesians. He says, But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity. And then he goes on to say, Because these are improper for God's holy people. You know, what I love about God is he's a gracious God. What I love about God is he's a forgiving God. 
And if his forgiveness and if his grace isn't enough for you, it's not enough for me. And you know what? I refuse to believe it's not enough for me. It's enough for all of us. And when he says, you know what? I want you to come into me. I want to provide for you a biblical marriage. I want you to sanctify that marriage bed. I want you to reclaim moral purity. And I want to lift up the biblical institution of marriage. I guarantee you it is what will restore this nation. But let it start with me. Let it start with you. And let it start today. And you know what, folks? I thank you for your teachable heart and your teachable spirit. And you may need to just take some time as a man and as a woman and just say, all right, Gary, you know, I feel a little bit like you spoke kind of directly to me. And, but forget what I said. Just get alone with God. Allow the Holy Spirit to just speak to you. Open up the Word of God. Go to people that love you enough that they'll speak the truth to you. They're not going to tell you what you want to hear, but they're going to speak the truth to you because they're committed to your marriage and your future as a biblical marriage. And then take the action that God desires for you. Two out of the three heroes are Jay and Monica. The third one is that terrific pastor who heroically and courageously stepped up and spoke the truth in love. Let that pastor's tribe increase. Pastors, shepherds that love us enough to speak the truth in love. Thanks for letting me speak into your life. But I think the final word should come now from Jay and Monica. I talked to God about it and I felt the Holy Spirit inside me really moving me and it was tremendous weight off my shoulders. Uh, it was really amazing and uh, I made that decision to leave. The shame left my heart. And Jay came home and just told me this is something we have to do. And he took the lead and he packed his bag and it was the hardest thing we've ever had to do and I cried and cried and cried and just the first night and first day were the hardest and we just prayed and we made it through that first night and then from then on it just our love blossomed our love for Christ blossomed our relationship with each other and the people around us blossomed and it was just such a release and the Holy Spirit just lifted us up and made the next few months just an amazing experience. Making the decision to move out, obey God, follow Christ, and just give everything to Him and put Him in control was one of the most important things that, that I think I've ever done in my life. Uh, it was one part of my life that I thought I could control and um, you know it, it wasn't and it was it was doing more bad than good. Two months after Jay moved out, um, he gathered our friends and family for my birthday and asked me to be his wife and just, it was such a blessing and just so wonderful to have our families there and knowing that God was looking down on us, just so glad that we were obedient in Him and two months later we were married and just our marriage has just been so blessed and so wonderful because of our obedience to Him. Mm-hmm. <laughs>